Coach Husky Nation is making his return to college basketball and he is going to be taking over Grambling State to try to rebuild them. As we are projected to finish seventh year headed into our first season, it's going to be a tough road ahead as we do have seven scholarships to work with this season, but we only have 78 points in our recruiting budget. Seniors Gary Mason and Marcus Abrams are our top players in our rotation headed into this year, but we'll only get one year with them. So we have to already start taking a look at some recruits replace them and we have two we like here in Elazar Alston and Brian McDonald both two stars that would bring us to the first game of the season going up against Appalachian State on the road as they would start to run away with this one 75 58 under 40 seconds left to go here in the second half Marcus Abrams would put that up and in but ultimately it wouldn't be enough as Stewart's shot would be off the mark Grambling State is going to drop their opening game of the season here to Appalachian State and start 0-1 on the season. Two weeks later, we would finally pick up our first win of the season against Colorado 62-53. And we would get some good news as Elastar Alston and Brian McDonald would sign with us. And then we would also sign next week our first three-star prospect in Willie Colmus. As we would hope our luck would continue after signing our first three-star, Marcus Abrams is going to knock that shot down here in in a close one against Furman at home up by two into McCall he's gonna lay that up and in he would get the lucky bounce as now Furman with it looking for three they would knock that down this game is not over yet as they have one last possession here that layup is off the mark and McCall would get the rebound and Marcus Abrams is going to run out the clock here in Grambling State is going to walk away with the victory and that would send them into rivalry week against Southern on a good note even though they were currently sitting at the bottom half of the conference at three and five rivalry week wasn't seeming to go so well for us but we still had a chance to get in it Marcus Abrams could knock that shot down though. Less than 40 seconds to go. Southern with the ball. Pump fake and they would lay that up and in for two. 16 seconds left. Down by seven. We need this shot to fall. Marcus Abrams knocks it down. But ultimately we would not be able to get another basket and Southern is going to walk away with a victory here in Rivalry Week. As that would bring us to our final game of the season going up against Alabama State. And this one wasn't even close. Marcus Abrams would lay that up and in again on the fast break. We are severely going to miss our senior point guard next season as one last shot. That is off the mark and Alabama State is going to win this one. We would finish the season 6-12 and in conference play and that would be just enough to get us the last spot in the conference tournament we would be taking on the number one seed Arkansas Pine Bluff and they were the number one seed for a reason as this game was not looking good for us 83 66 less than a minute to go they'll knock down another layup in the corner now with five seconds left to go and they are going to run out the clock to take the opening round victory as this one wouldn't even be close and we would be sent home packing to end our first season here with Grambling State Gary Mason and Marcus Abrams, no surprise, were our leading scores on the season with 14 and 12 respectively. And to close out season one, Kansas would end up defeating Villanova in the NCAA tournament 77 to 68. We did sign three prospects throughout the season, Willie Calmus, Brian McDonald, and Elazar Alston, as Brian McDonald ended up getting bumped up to a three-star rating. So that's two three-stars we signed. And unfortunately, as we knew headed into the season, Gary May and Marcus Abrams, our two leading scorers, are graduating this year. And in off-season recruiting, we would sign three-star Derek Kinsey. So that power forward would make it three three-star recruits we've signed here in season one. Headed into the second season of this rebuild, Grambling State was expected to finish second in the SWAC conference. And we would have five scholarships to work with, with a slightly increased budget of 81 recruiting points. First game of the season was at home against Cal State Fullerton, and we are off to a hot start. Start. It wasn't even close throughout as Calmus would knock down that shot and Grambling State would walk away with a victory here in the first game of season number two. Willie Calmus would have 30 points in his collegiate debut for us. And then afterwards, we would find out Bobby Marshall, the two-star point guard, had signed on the line for us. Through the first month of games, we were sitting at a perfect 6-0, looking to close out our non-conference schedule with a game against Hofstra, with our only loss up until this game coming up 
against St. Peter's. This one wasn't even close with less than a minute to go. We were up by 16. Hofstra trying to put some last minute points on the board. They would knock down that three, but they would not be able to come back as we would close out non-conference play with an 11 point victory over Hofstra. And we would be headed into rivalry week against Southern. We were looking for revenge as they beat us last season and it looked like we were gonna get it as we were handling them pretty easily. 79, 53, five seconds left to go, and we would run out the clock to get a rivalry week win this year, as that would bring us to the final game of the season against Prairie View A&M, and we were sitting at a perfect 17-0 in conference play this year with only one loss, that coming earlier this season to St. Peter's. So we were looking to close out a perfect conference schedule play this year, and we were up big Big time over Prairie View A&M with less than a minute to go. We would run out the clock here and we would cap off a perfect conference play as Wally Kalmus would lead us on the season with 21.3 points per game and Derek Kinsey the other freshman averaged a double double right behind Kalmus with 19 and 10 a game we would finish the season a perfect 18 and 0 in conference play 28 and 1 overall and that would be enough to get us the one seed in the conference tournament here in season number two our first round matchup against Mississippi Valley would be no problem and Elkhorn State would be blown out in the second round 85 to 53 as that would bring us to the SWAC Tournament Championship against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Just over a minute to go, this one wasn't even close. 80 to 55, Hopkins would knock down that three. And this lead would keep extending as Swift out to Hopkins for another three. He would knock that down and we would walk away with a victory, no problem, 91 to 58. And we would win the SWAC tournament here in season number two, as that would get us an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Villanova, Georgia Tech, Texas, and Ohio State were your four number one seeds, and we would draw the 15th seed in the East region, which means we would be going up against number two, Alabama, in the first round. And the winner of this game would be taking on either Illinois or Virginia, next round. To be honest, I didn't have high hopes for us in this round at all. It was a tough matchup, but I was proud of how hard we fought to actually stay in this game. But Bama ultimately proved to be too much for us as they would knock us out in the first round here. And that is how season number two would end for us here in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Texas would end up defeating Ohio State in the national championship, and Bobby Marshall would be the only recruit we signed in the regular season. Freshman Elazar Alston from our first recruiting class would be transferring out, and then in off-season recruiting, we would sign three more players, including three-star shooting guard Grant Poe. As headed into season three, we were expected to win the conference from ESPN. We would have have two scholarships to work with, but we did have an increase to 260 points in our recruiting budget. We had our toughest schedule yet as we'd open up with a top 15 game against Purdue and have a rematch against number six, Alabama. And before the season started, we had two upgrades for our facilities as well, which we would end up spending on our practice gym. This was going to be a tough test to open up season number three, going up against number 13, Purdue, down by four, less than 30 seconds to go. Poe coming up with a steal, that's gonna miss. McCall up and in for two. Down by two now, under 10 seconds to go. Derek Kinsley coming up with the steal. Up to Wally Comis, and he's gonna slam it down and tie it up. And that would send us to overtime. A minute and a half to go, Poe's gonna knock down a three. Up by six. It's Poe again from the free throw line. That's off the mark. McCall with it up and in. And we would run out the clock. And we are going to upset number 13 Purdue at home to open up season number three. Next week, we would also pick up a solid win against SMU 84-82. And our first loss of the season would come to Pittsburgh 89-79. to We had a game at home coming up against Sacramento State. And it was pretty important as Ben Meeks, a three-star point guard, was visiting for this game. And and this play right here tells you pretty much how the entire game went and won. We absolutely demolished Sacramento State 99-31 to to pick up the much needed win. And then it was time for the NCAA tournament rematch from last year. Going up against number 9 Alabama and last year's game, let's say, was a little closer. Alabama came out and dominated us this entire game. 
as we would end up dropping this one by 22 to the Crimson Tide. Following some up and down performances from our team through conference play, we were headed into the final game of the season, sitting at 12 and five in conference play, 21 and seven overall. If we wanted to lock up the regular season title this year, this was a game we would have to win as we were winning single-handedly and would end up taking this one over Arkansas Pine Bluff, 88 to 50 to end season three. Wally Call led us with 23 points per game this season. Eric Kinsey with 18 and 7 and our brand new freshman shooting guard Grant Poe with 11 and 2 per game. That win would give us the number one seed headed into the conference tournament. In our first round matchup against Jackson State we would win 98 to 60. Round 2 would be a 13 point victory 84 to 71 and we would find ourselves yet again in the conference championship here this time against Alabama A&M. Up by one, a and with the ball, they're gonna drive, lay that up and in to take the lead. With less than five seconds to go now, with a block, McCall has it on the fast break. He's going to slam it down. We would go up by one with 1 1.8 seconds left. That shot's off the mark. And here in season three, we are going to win our conference championship again, as that would get us the 14th seed in the West region in this year's NCAA tournament. And we would be going up against the number three seeded Cincinnati Bearcats. This first round matchup for us was a lot worse than last year's against Alabama, as we did not show up to play play at all, Cincinnati would destroy us, and we would end up getting booted once again out of the first round of the NCAA tournament, as that is how Season 3 would end for Grambling State. Villanova would end up defeating Texas in the National Championship, 95-78, to and our only recruit we would sign in the regular season would be three-star Reggie Dansby. Eric McCall, unfortunately, would be leaving us as he was one of our integral offensive players, but we would get some replacements in Stephen Hastings and Scott Woodward, both three-star prospects. Headed into season four, we had three upgrades available, so we would max out our practice gym and upgrade our study hall, and then we were given an invitation to the West Coast Conference, which we would accept. Also, another invitation, this time to the NIT preseason tournament here for season number four. And headed into this season, we were projected to finish second in our brand new conference behind Gonzaga. We'd have 190 95 recruiting points in two scholarships to work with this season and we couldn't be off to a hotter start as we had found ourselves in the preseason NIT championship match. Going up against Fairleigh Dickerson, we were up by three. Wally Comas would knock that down, extending this lead as then Jackson would go to the line to knock down some free throws. One more set of free throws this time from Comas as he would miss that last one and time would run out and we would win the NIT preseason championship here to start the season as we would continue with non-conference play going up against the NIU Huskies as we would travel to the Convo Center in DeKalb and we would destroy them no problem. We would end up taking this one to close out non-conference play 84 to 47 over the Huskies. Headed into conference play, we were sitting at 15 and two and we would start our first WCC conference game with a win over Pepperdine and then surprisingly a 20 point win over Gonzaga. We were sitting at 12 and one with only one loss in conference play. Loyola Marymount was making to look at two, but we would hold them off as we would take this one 76 to 65. And to close out the season, Derek Kinsey would be our leading scorer, averaging a double-double with 20 and 10, Thomas with 20 and three. Sophomore Grant Poe, 11 points per game, and we would ultimately end up getting the first seed in the WCC Conference Tournament, would defeat Santa Clara 87 to 75 in our first game, and would be going back up against Gonzaga here in the championship. Up by nine, five seconds to go. They would not foul as they had accepted their fate and we would come in and win the WCC our very first year and that meant we were headed back to the NCAA tournament and we would end up picking up the 10th seed this year in the West region, our best ranking yet. And we would be going up against number seven seeded UCLA and this one was closer than previous NCAA tournament games but ultimately we still have not been able to get our first round win yet this rebuild as UCLA would send us packing home here in the first 
first round once again. Clemson would end up defeating Oklahoma State in the national championship, and we would end up signing Devin Norton and Bill Hilliard, who is our first four-star prospect to the school. Freshman Reggie Dansby, unfortunately, would be transferring, though. And in off-season recruiting, we would sign another four-star and Ben Buckles, a four-star center. As at the end of this season, we were getting ready to leave the WCC as the Pac-10 offered us an invitation to join their conference next year. We were also given an invitation to the Old Spice preseason classic tournament. We were expected to finish fourth year in the Pac-10 this year, and with six scholarships available and 247 points we definitely were gonna have to recruit to try to rebuild this team that's starting to get up there in age as we would have our toughest schedule yet in this rebuild with a four star strength and before the season started we were able to max out our upgrades on our study hall as well we would find ourselves in the preseason Old Spice Classic Championship here to start the final season going up against Memphis we would have a six point lead Jackson for three he would not that down up by nine as we're gonna almost throw it away Kinsey would get the save and he would knock down that shot and we would end up winning our preseason tournament championship here to start the year and after that we would sign two more four stars to come to the program in starting conference play we would be sitting at nine and three and we would find ourselves ranked in the top 25 for the first time this rebuild our first conference play here in the Pac-10 would be against Oregon up 69 to 54. Jackson would knock that shot down and ultimately we would handle Oregon with no problem and pick up our first Pac-10 win here in our very first conference game. We would end up closing out Pac-10 conference play at 13 and 5, 22 and 8 overall and would finish the season ranked 19th in the nation. That would be good enough to get us the 3 seed in the Pac-10 conference tournament and we would defeat Cal in the first round, Arizona in the second round and would be going up against the Stanford Cardinals in the championship who we would end up defeating and that would get us a spot in the NCAA tournament as a 4 seed and would take on Drexel in the first round, defeat Kentucky in the second round, defeat Villanova in the Sweet 16, and would find ourselves in the Elite 8 against UConn in a close one here. They would take it down, 10 seconds left to go, they would knock down that 3, tied up at 84, 8.4 seconds left to go, Poe to take the lead, he would knock it down, and that would seal the deal as we're headed to the Final Four, and we would be taking on University of North Carolina, but they had our number today, as ultimately, we would not be able to beat the Tar Heels here and to end this rebuild they would end up knocking us out of the final four but I think it's safe to say that we have officially rebuilt Grambling State into a powerhouse.